listen or are voluntary, but almost everyone pays because politicians have enacted complicated laws to trick people into thinking they must pay. The view, may, view might sound absurd, and Mr. Schiff used to be cursed at when he voiced it, but some Americans are taking it seriously. The works of Mr. Schiff are now widely cited in the literature of tax protesters and right-wing organizations challenging the legitimacy of the federal government. And over the years, he's been a frequent guest on talk shows around the country, having discussed the issue with Larry King and Tom Snyder and in New York, Bob Grant. He says he sold 30,000 copies of his latest self-published book, The Federal Mafia, and more than 67,000 copies of his 1982 book, How Anyone Can Stop Paying Income Taxes. Mr. Schiff, good evening. Barry, it's a pleasure for me to be interviewed by you because you go all the way back with me, dare I say, to high school. Which high school? Well, I went to Hill House High, as a matter of fact, in New Haven, Connecticut, and we're having our 50th class reunion uh -huh. uh, um, September 29th. I'll be in New Haven. Uh -huh. and I look forward to seeing many members of my class uh -huh. of 1940. But all I can remember way back, you and Long John Neville. I remember Long John very well, very but well, Barry, with, with great mean, fondness. I, yes. I remember listening to you as far back as I can remember talk radio. So it's well, a pleasure for me, Barry, to yeah. be interviewed by you. Thank you. Talk radio started here. As a matter of fact, I just told uh, uh, Mr. Hanks of the Jolson uh, Group uh, that uh, this was the first talk show in, in American radio. So there you go. Anyway. Uh, yes, well, Barry, did, I'm sorry. Let me tell your listeners tonight that I will tell everybody listening to this program how they can immediately <clears throat> stop paying income taxes and how they can even get back all the money that they've been duped into paying this year. How? Okay, well, first of all, here's, why, here's how and why you can stop paying income taxes. Before I continue, let me say that the income tax probably represents the greatest program of organized extortion the world has ever seen. As a matter of fact, you have a copy of the New York Times article, and if you turn it over, uh, the last paragraph... Um, the, the Commissioner of Internal Revenue, Margaret Milner Richardson, even admits, she says, that filing tax returns is voluntary, though she says paying isn't. So she says filing is voluntary. And the reason why it's voluntary, Barry, is all information on a tax return can be used against you. Huh. So if there were a requirement that required you to file, such a requirement would make the income tax unconstitutional. So it what, has to be voluntary. What happens if you don't file? Well, your sex life improves. <laughs> no, well, you have more money to spend. No, but what happens come April 15th or with the extensions, October, whatever? Well, what happens, you have, if you follow my procedures, because I do file, Barry. I file a zero income return, which I'll explain how to do that. Uh, you file zero gross income, zero deduction, and a zero tax. You will also note in that article, in the last column, they mention a fellow by the name of Tim Deaton, from Shelbyville, Indiana, who filed a zero income tax return and received back from the IRS the $26,000 he had preceded, he, he paid the previous year. Okay, let me tell you how you can do this. First of all, all income, all the information on the tax return can be used against you, as Leona Hemsley found out. Remember, Leona Hemsley filed a tax return, listened to her accountants and lawyers, and ended up paying $50 million and going to jail. If she filed a tax return, as I explain in my book, uh, she, she would have been $50 million richer and wouldn't have gone to jail. In any case, income taxes have to be assessed, just like property taxes. There are 15 sections of the Internal Revenue Code from Section 6201 to Section 6215 that describe income taxes have to be assessed. Now, the average American doesn't know that. Income taxes get assessed when you send in a tax return and swear that you owe that amount of tax. At that point, the government takes what you swore you owe, and they assess it on the assessment rolls of the federal government. And this is what's called self-assessment. And any accountant and lawyer listening to this program knows that income tax is based on self-assessment, and I invite any such accountant or lawyer to be showing and, and contradict me. The point is, when you assess yourself, and the Supreme Court has ruled that you can't owe an income tax until it is assessed. After you assess yourself by sending in a tax return, the government will then apply 
against the assessment that you made against yourself all the money you had been duped into paying before the assessment was made. Now, to get back your money that you paid, when you file a tax return, as I do, around April 15th or April 2nd, whenever you want to file it, you swear to having zero income and zero deductions and a zero tax. You then show whatever money you paid, either in the form of W-2 withholding or by attaching any proof of, of making uh, 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 estimated payments, which is what Tim Deaton did, and you show that as an overpayment, and you ask for your money back. In many cases, you'll get it. If the government doesn't give it to you back, then six months later, you can sue the government for a refund. Now, uh, the, uh, so that's how you get the money back. And, and the reason you can swear, Gary, uh, Barry, that you had zero income is that the word income itself is not defined in the Internal Revenue Code. The only thing that the Internal Revenue Laws uh, attempt to tax is income. But income is an abstract accounting term, which the courts has defined as a corporate profit. So the only thing that the 16th Amendment and our tax statutes attempts to uh, tax are the profits of corporations. But even corporations don't have to pay income tax either. Now, the so-called income tax is really a profits tax, which no American has to pay. Let me put, bring it down to an example of one. Do you file yearly? Yeah, I do now. I, before, I didn't. The reason I file is the courts are so corrupt. See, the reason Americans pay is the corruption that exists on the federal bench. And the worst corruption is in the Second Circuit Court of Appeal in New York City, the worst court in the country. It's one of the reasons I moved to Las Vegas, uh, Barry, is to get away from the judges in the Second uh, Circuit. Now, you file on April 2nd, 3rd, or whatever, yeah, before uh, this, the 15th. But this year I haven't even filed yet, but uh, we... I file a zero income return. Okay, I know that. Now, what happens then? Well, nothing. Well, I, I don't get any money back because I don't pay taxes to begin with. But for those who do pay, like Tim Deaton did... Forget about Tim Deaton. Let's talk about Erwin Schiff. I don't pay any income taxes, Barry. No. So I don't get any money back. But you could get all your money back, now, Barry. Now, do you work? You well, have of course your, I you, work. I'm you, working right now. I'm I know. promoting my you, book. You have books and you yes. have income. What of that? Well, I have income in an economic sense, but not in a, in, a, in a legal taxable sense. You see, income has two definitions. It has an economic definition, and in an economic sense, you might say I have income. But from a legal sense, from a tax sense, I have no income because the word income really means a corporate profit. And I can prove that. Have you heard from time to time, Barry, that many American corporations pay no income taxes? Uh. And the reason is they don't show a profit, no matter how much income they have. And if they have a profit, then they pay a tax. Now, the definition of income, as defined in the Internal Revenue Code, doesn't make a distinction between corporations and individuals. Income is income. So how can these corporations have billions? One year, I think General Dynamics had gross income of $6 billion, paid no income tax, because it didn't have a profit. And since you, since no individual has a profit, no individual is subject to now, the federal income tax. Erwin Schiff, if you don't mind, I, I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. Sure. I don't want to talk about General Dynamics or AT&T. I want to talk about Erwin Schiff. I don't pay income tax. And I'll tell you what, Barry. Do they? I will. I will. I have the Internal Revenue Code in front of me, and I sell the Internal Revenue Code for sixty-eight dollars. I will pay five thousand dollars to anybody who calls your show, Barry, uh -huh. and cites any statute that says individuals are required to pay income tax. What started all this? What started? <laughs> okay, it started way back in nineteen forty. It's actually it started, Barry. I wrote a book in nineteen forty-six entitled. The biggest con, how the government is fleecing you, was the conservative book of the month club selection and sold about 100,000 copies. Uh, in that book, uh, I what, try to explain. What were you doing at that time? At that time, I was living in New Haven, Connecticut, and this, this program goes to there, so I want to say yeah. hi to all my <laughs> friends in New Haven. Okay. Uh, I was running an insurance and investment business, and I, and I saw then that people were making all kinds of decisions based upon the impact of taxes. People were getting children to get the, the deduction. They were going into pensions, profit-sharing, tax shelters. And it was, the, it was the impact of taxes that, in many cases, determined the basis of decisions that people were making. 
And I was in the tax shelter business in the 60s, and I saw people waste money going into oil shelters, uh -huh. cattle shelters, all kinds of shelters. Uh -huh. So I decided to write a book showing how the taxes, the income tax, was literally undermining and destroying America's ability to produce. A former Chief Justice, John Marshall, said the power to tax is the power to destroy. And I believe then that the politicians yeah. literally were destroying America with excessive taxation. Yeah. So when I analyzed it, I then came, I then discovered that Oliver Wendell Holmes uh, had written a decision in 1928 in which he admitted it was Sullivan versus the United States. Since all information on a tax return can be used against you, he said you didn't have to give the information. You can plead the fifth instead of giving the government information on a 1040. Uh -huh. So uh, in 1974, that's what I did. I filed a Fifth Amendment return, gave the government no information, told them why, and they didn't do anything about it. I did the same thing in 75, 76. And around 1977, I was interviewed by a reporter from the Hartford Current. And he was interviewing me about my book called The Biggest Con. And in The Biggest Con, I explained how people were not paying income taxes using Fifth Amendment returns and also claiming they didn't earn any money. All we got was irredeemable notes issued by the Federal Reserve, which is a private bank, and therefore we didn't have to report them. So in connection with that interview, he said to me, well, are you paying income taxes? Up until that time, I hadn't revealed that I wasn't paying. I didn't want to rub the government's nose in it. I was getting away. I wasn't paying for four years. So I told him, off the record, I said, no, I'm not paying either. But I said, that's off the record. So the next day, the Hartford Current came out with his story that Erwin Schiff, a businessman from New Haven, doesn't pay any income taxes. He violated your, uh, your trust. Yeah, well, I, I thought, he said, well, we hadn't this is said, claimed it was off the record beginning, <laughs> say, at the beginning of the interview. Well, now the radio stations, WAVZ in, in New Haven, called me and said, is that true? Well, I wasn't going to deny it. And I said, yes, I haven't been paying income taxes, you know, uh, since 1974. Well, suddenly, the, the talk show hosts were interested not in my economic beliefs, how the, the income tax was destroying the country. Uh, my book was about inflation, how the government hides the true character of the national debt, how, how government labor laws uh, make people unemployable. Everybody wanted to hear how I was getting away with not paying income taxes. And because I... They, this is what they wanted to hear. They didn't want to hear my views on inflation, on taxation. Of course. So, and that's... I became very popular on radio talk shows, and the government let me, didn't do anything about it. This was 75. So finally, I got on the Tom Snyder show, and uh, it was reported he had the biggest listening audience he ever had on that, on that particular night. It was on twice. This was in 1979, and more and more people were doing what I was doing. So the government, in order to intimidate the American public, charged me in 1979 with willful failure to file a tax return. And, uh, but you had little filed. by little, I wasn't filing in those days. Ah. And then little by little, then I was retried again. Uh, for, for char they charged me with tax evasion uh, in 1975, and I was tried in New Haven, Connecticut. And I sent you a copy. Mm -hmm. My conviction in 19, uh, 1985 was reported in the Journal of Taxation. And what happened, I was convicted uh. for tax evasion in 1985. Irwin Schiff, I have to stop you right there. It's a cliffhanger. Okay. We're going to pause for commercial so that I have some income. Erwin Schiff, leading income tax authority, and how he stayed out of jail immediately after this. He's a leading income tax authority. He's written many books, all of them best bestsellers, on how to do battle with the IRS. Frank in Brooklyn. Yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, Frank, uh, Barry. Yeah. Uh, Barry, you and uh, Irwin, I mean, you guys ain't spring chickens, but you sound like you sound like young men, 20 years <laughs> old. It's unbelievable. Thank you. I mean, I'm only uh, 30 years old. Uh, Irwin, I got a question for you. A few weeks ago, there was a case, uh, it was, it was uh, widespread news here about some uh, police officers and yes. city workers doing Code 99. Yes. Like they claimed 99 dependents. Yes. Well, unfortunately, I was involved, you know, I, I, I did something like that, right? Well, now you, I get were, you were involved in one of those police officers. Well, I wasn't. No, I wasn't a police officer, but I, I did something like that. Where I, yes. I didn't know that 99 was 99 dependents, but I, I did it, and they weren't taking any taxes out. Okay. Now I get stuck with this tax bill, like for seven seven thousand dollars. Okay. Is there any way I can get out? Absolutely, absolutely. First of all, uh, let me explain. I tell people, you, when you claim 99 withholding allowances, and all these police officers who were charged with tax evasion. One of the things, Barry, that they were charged with doing was claiming 99 withholding allowances. 
Uh, that's because the the uh, uh, the uh, uh, bookkeeping equipment at the police department wouldn't accept an exempt. They were told to claim 99 withholding allowances. And so they're all innocent. I'll tell you why. They're interested as a, they're in, they're innocent as a matter of law and as a matter of fact. But in any case, what I tell people to do, Barry, is to claim exempt. You see, if you, when you fill out a W-4, you, you're, on, you're allowed on the W-4 to claim exempt because Section 60, so, uh, 3402N of the Internal Revenue Code gives every American the right to stop the withholding of taxes from his pay. And all he has to do is, is check off those uh, two sentences, A and B, on a 1040. And an a, it says uh, that last year I didn't have any tax liability and that this year I don't anticipate any tax liability. And since nowhere in the code is there any provision that establishes an income tax liability, everyone can swear to having no liability last year and no liability this year. And you can claim exempt. But after you claim exempt, you should turn over the W-4 and right on the back, there's plenty of room, that this form is not being filed voluntarily. If I didn't file it, I couldn't get paid. That's so to prevent the government from using the form against you, even if they claim it was filed uh, wrongly. Uh. Uh, what they're doing is using against these police officers their W-4. But their lawyers, if they know anything, can keep the W-4 from being introduced because the government can only use against you information voluntarily given. Now, all Americans are compelled to give employers W-4s because if you don't do it, they won't pay you. So uh, this is how all those uh, policemen can, uh, can, can stop. But let me tell you this, gentlemen. Okay, now. I got a if, lot, Irwin, I got a lot of calls. You got to make them quick. Okay, so, but to tell you what to do, is that there is no liability. Uh, I believe in going down with the IRS with an internal revenue code, which we sell, and the code, and ask them to produce for you any code section that makes you liable for the tax. Let me just say this, because I have a, a web page, ishift.com, and there's a lot of information on my web page, ishift.com. Spell that out for me. I, just a small i, S-C-H-I-F-F, uh -huh. dot com, C-O-M. You know, I, I left off the H H H W W W whatever. Okay. It's iShift.com. There's a lot of information on my website, and my book is available in the local bookstores, Barnes and Noble. Uh, what, what's it called? The, my current book is called the, the Federal Mafia: How It Illegally Imposes and Collects Income Taxes and How Americans Can Fight Back. How, who publishes? Well, I do. And if the book, and if you don't find it in your bookstores, you can order by credit card by calling one eight hundred Tax No More. One eight hundred eight two nine. Six 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 six. Okay, Richard in Amityville. Yes, Barry. How are you? <laughs> I'm amazed at the dialogue going on here because although I respect the experience of your guests, the fact is is that the United States Constitution in the 16th Amendment specifically states that income is due and the government has the right to collect from any source income from any source derived. Unfortunately, I had the experience of spending four years of law school and another two years of postgraduate law school, and I know my income tax courses all too well. And I could tell you that there have been a legion of cases where people have attempted to try to circumvent the tax law and the finding that income taxes are due. And we can point to a host of well-known, well-established people who we've seen gone to, to jail as a result of trying to evade them. I accept your guest's uh, bet to uh, show him a section in the code that says the taxes are due, and I direct his attention to Section 61 of the Internal okay, Revenue Code. Okay, stop right code. here. Now, now, first of all, Gary, uh, Barry, hold this guest it, on. Once more, Bobby, and you're Barry, gone. I'm so, okay. Barry, <laughs> Barry, hold this lawyer on because you he's made so many... You can't get my name straight and you work on income he, tax he, forms? He's made, he's, made, he's made so many false statements, Barry, it's pathetic. But, all right, let me... So I, I want to knock him down one at a time. The 16th Amendment was an enabling statute, and the Supreme Court ruled the case is Bruce Schaeber versus Union Pacific Railroad, 241, uh, 241 U.S. 1, that the 16th Amendment did not amend the Constitution. What the Supreme Court ruled that the 16th Amendment did was um, establish the income tax as an excise. The, the, I, I can read you right from the case. They said an income tax is inherently an excise and allowed the government to impose the tax as an excise. However, the federal government has never imposed a tax pursuant to the 16th Amendment. But whether or not you owe a tax is based upon what the current Internal Revenue Code says. 
Now, I'll pay you $5,000 if you can cite any statute that states individuals that have income are required to pay the tax. And let me give you an example of such a, of such a code section. Section 5703, which deals with tobacco taxes, states that manufacturers of tobacco products shall be liable for the tax imposed, and further, such taxes shall be paid on the basis of a return. Okay. Section 4374, dealing with taxes paid by foreign insurance companies, says the taxes imposed by this chapter shall be paid on the basis of a return. Irwin. Now, you mentioned, now he mentioned Section 61, Barry. Let me, let, me, let me ask him to read where in 61 it says income taxes okay. have to be paid. Go ahead. <laughs> if I, unfortunately, I'm at home, and I happened to hear this as I was getting changed after a tough day, and I would have come prepared with my internal revenue code. I know that Section 61, together with the regulations that follow therefrom, repeat the 16th Amendment verbatim and say that income is due from any source derived. Yeah, but and they use the phrase, any source derived, because... They want to distinguish between the fact that it's not only due on income, but it's due on income from any source. So if someone does something in exchange for something else, such as bartering services, or someone gives something to someone else in exchange for something else, that's as much income as any as earning okay. would be income. Well, let me ask you something, sir. Are you a tax lawyer? I'm a uh, state and gift tax lawyer. Oh, you're, you're a state and gift tax lawyer. Okay. Now, let me ask you something, but you're a basic lawyer. Now, did you know that all information on a tax return can be used against a person who files? Sure. It's a statement. It's a okay, statement so, voluntarily so all, given. It, doesn't the Fifth Amendment say you can't be compelled to be a witness against yourself? Well, it does say that, but, but, but what? The, <laughs> the obligation to file a tax return is the obligation to file a truthful statement. But how can the government compel you, obligate you, to give because them information? Because if you're giving a truthful you... statement, you're not incriminating yourself. But first of all, the Fifth Amendment doesn't say anything about incriminating. It says you can't be a witness against yourself. Exactly. Now, the Supreme Court has ruled that Sullivan, in two cases, the Sullivan case and the Garner case, that all information on a tax return can be used against you. Isn't that correct? Barry, invite me on your show. I'll be happy to come. I'll I come mean, with my cases and my internal revenue code, and I'll love to take your guest on. I'll tell and you what you... we'll do. I will offer this guest $5,000, Barry, yeah. if he faxes to you any provision of the Internal Revenue Code that requires anybody to pay income taxes. Okay. He can't do it. I hope all of New York heard that, because well, tomorrow, I, Barry, you better I believe it. Your and what is your name? Why don't, you, why don't you announce your name so everybody sure. knows how you welch on your bet? <laughs> The name is Richard Handler. I live in Amityville, New York. Richard Handler. Now, what Richard Handler is going to do, he's going to send you, Barry, uh, I'm not a sure. code section that which says that individuals are required to pay income taxes. And I'll, then I'll donate 5000 uh, to him or his favorite charity. Okay. We're looking forward to it. Well, Barry, thanks a lot. Thanks. I enjoyed the spirited conversation. The guest is great. It poses a lot of interesting questions for everyone. And I'll fax you something tomorrow. Thank you. He's a leading in income tax authority, and he's talking about the IRS. He didn't like them. And uh, his best-selling books are available in Barnes & Noble or any place that sells books. The book sells for $25, and it'll be sent to you priority mail. Okay, and I have uh, Barry in a phone booth on the street. Yes, sir. Good evening, Barry. Good evening. And good evening, Mr. Uh, Irwin. Sh I forgot your last name. Chef. Chef. Uh, yes. Um, you mentioned the 16th Amendment, which is the federal income tax. Well, that was an enabling statute. It right, allowed I, the government. What, what I want to do is go back one year before that was enacted. Yes. And what I'm going to relate to you is something I heard on a talk radio station very similar to Barry's. Yes. I believe it was shortwave. The guy spoke for about an hour. Yes. And he said that in order to amend the Constitution to get the 16th amendment enacted it required uh i, I believe it was a, either a two-thirds vote or a three-quarters vote by the states and at yes. that time there were 48 states so that yes. we, that meant about 36 38 states yes. had to agree to this yes to amend the constitution and he contends that not one state voted for it and this is when the power grab from the individual states went to the federal government well, okay, let me clarify that. There is a book called The Law That Never Was uh, that basically proved that the 16th Amendment was not legally ratified. But that's immaterial. You see, even if it were legally ratified, the present law is not, there's no law that's passed in conformity with the amendment. The 16th Amendment has nothing to do with the current income tax. Whether you owe an income tax is based upon what the current Internal Revenue Code says. 
Forget the 16th Amendment. And the reason we have the 16th Amendment is that the Supreme Court in 1895 declared an income tax, which was passed by Congress in 1894, unconstitutional. So it is illegal. No, 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 no. The income tax itself is not illegal no, not because it's voluntary. Tax, the, the no, what is illegal is the criminal enforcement of the income tax by the, by the judges of this country. The biggest collection of criminals in this country sit on the federal bench. U.S. attorneys, judges, criminally enforce the income tax in order to intimidate the American public into paying a tax that no law requires them to pay and that the Constitution would bar the government from collecting. The income tax is enforced in violation of the First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, the Thirteenth Amendment, the Sixteenth Amendment, and all three taxing clauses of the Constitution. The tax itself, as written, is okay. It's voluntary, just, to, just like the IRS says it is. It's based on voluntary compliance. Uh, Mr. Schiff. Yes. Uh, fortunately, we have lots of people that uh, keep the lights burning. I have okay. to pause for a moment. Can you stay with us? Absolutely. Thank you. Erwin Schiff, uh, he uh, has been... Uh, a jailbird and political activist. I have on the Newsmaker line in Las Vegas, Nevada, Mr. Irwin Schiff. He is a leading income tax authority. And we're talking about the IRS and how to stop paying taxes. He's written books called The Federal Mafia, The Great Income Tax Hoax, How an Economy Grows and Why It Doesn't, The Schiff Audio, Audio Report, that's a series of six one-hour cassette tapes and accompanying exhibits. How anyone can stop paying income tax. The social security swindle, how anyone can drop out. And the biggest con, how the government is fleecing you. Mr. Schiff was just in New York. He had a, uh, a seminar on uh, taxes at the, uh, at the Crown Plaza Hotel here in New York. And this was just last week, and he will return soon again. Mr. Ship, once again, good evening. Yeah, I, I want to, uh, uh, Barry, yeah, that's October 4th. I'll be at the Crown Plaza. Oh, because it's... Yeah, I made, I made a mistake on the, on the facts <laughs> I sent you. October 4th from 7 to 11 at the LaGuardia Airport at the... Uh, I'm charging $25, but, I, but if you bring your tax lawyer or CPA... They get in free. <laughs> That's great. But the uh, flyer that I have says September the 4th. I know. I made a mistake. I corrected it after. Oh, that's, <laughs> it's going to give a lot of your people tremendous confidence. <laughs> Peter in Manhattan. Peter? Hi. Hello, Peter. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. A um, couple of questions for Mr. Schiff. Uh, first of all, were you, you sound like a professor from from Fordham Business School. Did you used to teach there? No, but I, I had a cousin, Jack Schiff, who, who taught at uh, uh, taught NYU and... Uh, well, that's uh, close. Schiff, I think. That's hmm. close. So you might have gotten... No, because there, there was an Irwin Schiff in, who was, a, who was um, a tax specialist uh, at the Fordham Business School. Um, no, how no, no relation. There was an Irwin Schiff, the fat one, who got shot in Upper Manhattan, <laughs> and that some of the newspapers ran that story with my picture. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Yes. How now? Correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't pay taxes, correct? No, I don't pay income taxes. I pay all the other. I pay property taxes, gasoline taxes. I, you know. Yeah. But income taxes. Are, see, what makes the income tax different? And you'll, you, you, you can see it cl clearly. If you were to buy a bottle of wine, you pay alcohol tax. Is that sure. right? If you were to buy a pack of cigarettes, you're paying tobacco taxes, of right? Of course. If you were to fill up the tank of gasoline, you'd be paying federal gasoline tax. Is that correct? Yeah. But in either case, have you given, given the government information they could use against you? No. In either case, have you sworn under penalty of perjury that you calculated the correct amount? No. What the government wants you to pay income tax, the government, A, wants you to hire somebody to calculate the tax, then swear under penalty of perjury that you calculated correctly, and then they want to look at your books and records and prove if you didn't calculate it correctly, you're guilty of tax evasion. And let me just prove one thing. Did you file a tax return last year? Of course. No, you didn't. You filed a confession. Oh, is that what I... It, of course. It, See, what the government does, it, Barry, it takes a confession, which is what you really file, and it calls it a return. Now, word, quite, I have a question, though. Sure, go ahead. How often do you get audited? I don't get audited at all. As a matter of fact, in, the, in my book, in the Federal Ma Mafia, I reproduced excerpts from the IRS's own audit manual, and let me read what the IRS's own audit manual says...
Let me read. As a matter of fact, it's it's uh, paragraph 342.12 from the Handbook of Special Agents. Let me read what it says. An individual taxpayer may refuse to exhibit his books and records for examination on the grounds that compelling him to do so would violate his right against self-incrimination under the Fifth Amendment and constitute an illegal search and seizure under the Fourth Amendment. And then they cite cases. The next paragraph is entitled Waiver of Constitutional Rights. So the Handbook for Special Agents, and, I, and I, as I said, I reproduced these sections right in my book, admit that when you turn over your books and records uh, to the IRS, uh, you're waiving your Fourth and Fifth Amendment, and you don't have to. Mm-hmm. And incidentally, let me just say this. But then they can always turn around and subpoena them. No, they think. can't. No IRS agents. See, the IRS is purely an administrative agency. They have no enforcement powers whatsoever. The only reason why the IRS gets away with what they do is, is local law enforcement people don't arrest them. Let me just show If the police chief of New York mm-hmm. called the, the head of the IRS and said, look, if any IRS agent threatens to seize any property mm-hmm. or seizes any property in, in Manhattan or New mm-hmm. York, he better be prepared to show us where we, he has a delegation of authority from the Secretary of the Treasury. And if he can't produce that delegation of authority, I'm going to arrest him. That would stop all IRS seizures tomorrow. The reason why the IRS gets away with what they do is because of the criminality and the duplicity of U.S. attorneys, federal judges, and the complete duplicity of the U.S. legal establishment. The income tax supports half the lawyers of this country, and you heard one earlier who called this show. Well, also, I trust me, I know. Um, Another question for you, though, is... uh, You better make it quick. we got a lot of calls. All right. Um, The thing is, say the IRS has a dispute with me. They say I have to pay so, so much. I say I don't have to pay that much. Why is it that I have to turn around, first pay them, and <laughs> well, then I have to take them to court to sue to get my money exactly back? Exactly right. That's what they con you into thinking. Ba- uh, Barry, did you hear that? It's nonsense. They want you to pay them, then to sue and get your money back. The whole thing is ridiculous. Okay. If an IRS agent here wants to audit you, what we do is we go down to the audit with a tape recorder, okay? And Before the IRS agent, uh, there's no IRS agent who has any delegation of authority to even examine your books and records. So we ask him, if he wants to look at our books and records, let me see your delegation of authority. I mean, suppose Uh. a washerwoman or a cleaning, uh, the the janitor of the IRS sent you a How do you know that the IRS agent who is asking to see your books and records has any authority to look at your books and records? Okay, next call. That's uh, Joe in Nassau County, 391 Yeah, hi, ba- hi, Barry. Hi. Barry, I'm a retired employee of the U.S. District Court. All I can tell you is I wish that I had one dollar for every case that I handled which involved a criminal conviction for failure to file an income tax return. That's number one. Number two, as far as filing a fraudulent W-4 form, that can be prosecuted as being violative of Title 18, Section 1001 of the U.S. Code. Okay, let, let, me, let me respond to that. First of all, the reason why people are convicted criminally is because you have judges who are criminals. And I can prove that. If, if a person, I, I have my own radio show here in Las Vegas, uh, Barry, it's on KLAV. Uh, and, I, and also on KVEG, which is a 50,000-watt station. And every Thursday, I call the U.S. Attorney's Office in Las Vegas, and you can verify this, and I offer the U.S. Attorney $5,000 if he, if he identifies any law that says you have to pay income tax, and they hang up on me. Now, in, if you want to <laughs> prove that those judges were honest, why don't you call back to this show and cite the statute that requires Americans to pay income taxes? If you tell me, that judges have put Americans in jail for one reason. Well, the Russians put Shostanitsyn in jail. They put Sharansky in jail. They put Mandela in jail. What does going in jail have to do with proving truth? The fact of the matter is the biggest collection of criminals in New York City sit on the Second Circuit Court of Appeal. They put me in jail. You know why? Barry, I sent you uh, an excerpt from an article that appeared about my conviction. And... The Journal of Taxation said that my conviction violated 40 years of tax law. Peter Dorsey, who is now the chief judge in, in uh, Connecticut, instructed my jury that they could convict me of tax evasion, even if the government didn't prove the act of evasion yeah. I was charged with committing. Okay.
Mr. Irwin Schiff, my guest. My phone number. Oh, that's free. good. Thank you for taking my call so quickly. I have two very quick questions. One, um, wouldn't not paying income tax affect your Social Security? And the other, would I obtain his books without attending a seminar? Those are the questions. Y yes. Um, you no, know, in paying income, paying income tax is totally voluntary, and the receipt of Social Security, uh, which is, is based upon your earnings. As a matter of fact, you're entitled, you're eligible for Social Security, even if you don't pay Social Security tax. The tax, and there is no such thing as a Social Security tax itself. If you look at the law, the Social Security taxes, as, as, as I'm saying, are in subtitle C. They're really a payroll tax. They're a tax on wages, and the word Social Security doesn't even appear in the taxing statutes in connection with that tax. Wow. And the benefits, the benefits are separated from the tax. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when the, the, the illegality of the Social Security came before the Supreme Court and the First Circuit Court of Appeal, the government argued that the taxes and the benefits were separate, and one had nothing to do with the other. Now, as far as obtaining my books, yes, you don't have to come to the seminar. First of all, just... I have a web page, iShift.com. The books are available in most of your major bookstores. And you can get the book by simply calling right now 1 800 829 6666. The book is over 300 pages, it sells for $25. And if you're not satisfied with the book, return it and we'll refund your money. Oh, okay. okay. And that's uh, the federal mafia. The federal mafia, how the government illegally collects taxes and how you can fight back. Louise and Darianne. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. I have a question for Mr. Schiff. Um, yes. I've been paying estimated taxes for the past two years. I'm self-employed. Yes. I want to buy a house. Yes. I've been told that in order for me to qualify for a mortgage from the bank, I have to show the... I'm, I'm going through a mortgage broker. Uh, yes. I have to show him and confirm my last year's income by showing him my last year's tax oh, okay. return Okay, let, let me explain it. What do I do? I'll tell you what to do. First of all, you said you filed estimated taxes last year. Did right. You, did you file a final return? Yes. Uh, this year? Did, uh, you, uh, For 1996. Income? But you didn't file. Okay. Uh, by not filing a return, if you, if you were to file a return as shown in my book, you'll be able to get back all the income taxes you've already paid, all the estimated, because you will not assess yourself if you file a zero income return. Now, as far as getting a mortgage is concerned, when I got a mortgage in New Haven, Connecticut, years ago, uh, the uh, the loan officer felt a little funny asking me for my tax return because in those days most of the people in New Haven, Connecticut knew I wasn't paying income taxes. So he had a smile when he asked for my. And in those years I wasn't filing. So what I had to do was prove my credit worthiness by using other sources. In order to qualify for the mortgage, I had established what my uh, so-called income was. Uh, so I, my, I had an accountant in those days, and he gave me a statement. Erwin, respectfully, can yes. you tell this lady what to do with her case? Yeah. yeah, what you can do, you can establish from other sources your credit worthiness. You can show them your bank balance. You can show them uh, your business, your, your deposits. But, but that's not the way a mortgage loan is derived. In other well, words, they're not going to loan me, if I'm making 100, let's say I'm making 25000 a year, they're not going to give me a mortgage uh, that's worth two hundred thousand. Yes, they're going to base all. it on. They're going to base it on my income. But if you tell them you have no taxable income, you that's show right. them you have they no do? taxable income. Look, I wouldn't want to pay income tax just so I can get a mortgage when I'm not legally required to pay income. No, tax. but on the other hand, I do want to own a house. So what do I do? Well, I know many people who don't pay income taxes who get mortgages. They establish their credit from other sources. First of all, if you don't pay income taxes, you don't need such a big mortgage. You'll have more money to put down in your house. It's no problem, believe me. It could be a problem. Well, I don't know. It, it sounds kind of spurious to me. I mean, having assets is one part of the puzzle in getting a, a mortgage. If you can but, show... But it's not the whole, it's not the whole equation. Look, when, when people were getting mortgages before there was an income tax, you can establish your credit worthiness on the basis of various other criteria. Now, I'm telling you, you can do it. Well, and, okay. and many people who do. Thank you. Thank you. Frank in New Milford, New Jersey. Hi, gentlemen. I've got a question similar to the one that she was asking. Yes. Let's say I, I file a, a zero income on my tax return. Yes. But I, I am freelance and I work for a lot of different companies. Yes. When they file their returns, they in fact put down that they've given me money. Okay, that's a very good question. First of all, when I file a zero income return, I put a one and a half page attachment explaining why I have zero income. And I, and I put a lot of, on an attachment to the return. Okay. When...
when you're uh, when people send to the government a W uh, uh, 1090s, right? They're telling the government that they're paying you one thing uh, when when the tax laws supposedly tax another. For instance, suppose there was a law that said you ought to pay taxes on how many grapefruit you earn. Right. And somebody notified the government they said they paid you oranges. What do I care what the what the government tells? Oranges are not taxable. Now, there is nothing in the Internal Revenue Code that says wages are taxable or dividends are taxable or interest is taxable. And I challenge any tax lawyer to call this show and read from the Internal Revenue Code where it says wages and salaries are Okay, then one question. Taxable. Then you're going to tell me that there have been times I filed a return and then, then they'll bill me for extra taxes due. They'll say, wow, dude, we, just got, we just got a form okay. from this guy. He said he gave you X amount. You owe us X amount more. Okay, now you go down to the IRS with a tape recorder yeah. and you ask the person who, who determined that. You, I want to see uh, your uh, delegation of authority for, for making this kind of a copy. They see. don't have it. You're back you to see, that. in order to fight the government, you have to know you have to know certain things and you can't learn all this right. from a talk I, show. I have one more quick one. I also yes. have a small corporation. Yes. Right? Now, my accountant sees to it that I don't have a, that, that I don't make a profit. Therefore, I don't I don't pay tax on my profit. Yet, I have to pay a minimum tax just for having that corporation. Oh, wait a minute! Now, 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 Barry, this gentleman has proved something. You have a small corporation, right. is that right? Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you something. That corporation, I would say, earns over 100000 of income. Is that right? Uh, maybe uh, close to that. Okay. Sometimes less, but, sometimes more. Well, all right. But it pays no income tax, doesn't right. it? Right. Well, we, we, well, we no, do no, it. No. I mean, we, we fidget around. We see no, wait a that minute. I don't make a profit. No, this is very important. Right. This is, Barry, this is very important. It better so be. It better be. The corporation doesn't pay income tax. It only pays on its profit. Is that right? Yeah, I still pay a minimum amount of tax. But if it doesn't have a profit, right. it pays, which, which proves that the so-called income tax is in reality a profit tax, because corporations don't pay a tax on their income. Yeah, they only pay it on their Irwin, profit. Erwin, again, respectfully, will you answer the man's question? They well, have to pay a minimum tax. Well, the individuals don't. There is no, no I law. I mean, the corporation, we still have to pay a minimum to the state to the to the federal government. For, for, no, you uh, don't. No corporation. There is no statute. You well, ask I'm your accountant. My accountant then. <laughs> you ask your accountant. Okay. You okay, ask your thank accountant. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Okay. Okay. Let me Please. just say this. Anybody can prove me wrong, Barry. All they have to do is call the show, and say, I have the Internal Revenue Code in front of me. Let anybody read from the code where it says any uh, individual or any corporation has to pay an income tax. It's Pete. not there. Pete in Nassau County, Erwin Schiff, my guest. Yes, sir. I'd like to say hello to Erwin. This is Pete from Long Island, uh, Erwin. Hi, Pete. How you doing? Listen, uh, Barry, I'd like to tell you that everything that Erwin is telling you is absolute truth, and it is borne out in the uh, uh, March 27, 1943 congressional record. I just happen to have a copy with me. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah. And it explains the individual income tax collection bill of 1943. And who are you? I'm uh, an old friend of Irwin's. I used to... Uh, Barry, I haven't spoken to this gentleman in about 10 years. Yeah. I recognize who he is. Yeah. yeah. And what uh, does he do? It, what did I do? Yeah, no, you tell. You say everything he says is true uh, based on what authority. What do you do? Well, I'm uh, semi-retired now. Well, that's a good job. Uh, yes, it is. The, uh, <laughs> but what I, what I want to tell you, uh, Barry, is that this is explained in the uh, March 27th, 1943 Congressional Record House, and uh, it begins on 2576. Page now listen, 2576. I, hey, hey, I don't have a copy of it. Well, I understand, but what I'm telling you is that it states everything that Irwin is saying, that okay. it, it, it explains it then in why do people pay terms. Then why do people pay taxes? Because the tax is based on, on ignorance, intimidation, uh, and fear. Okay. Next call is Kevin in New Jersey. I Three nine one two eight hundred, Kevin. Right, uh, Irwin. I'm just interested in uh, what about the little guy? Um, I don't have a lot of money. I'm not a a lawyer, and and I've heard the horror stories. I I certainly don't want to pay an illegal tax, but I also don't want to end up in jail. Okay, uh, how does the little guy question. handle this? The people who ended up in jail, number one were many people who, in the past, like myself, years ago, who didn't file. I've developed techniques now which allow you not to pay the tax, uh, without, even despite the corruption that exists on the federal bench and despite the corruption of U.S. attorneys. By filing a tax return, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal has ruled in three cases that a zero-income return is a return. So had I filed these returns, 
years ago, they couldn't have prosecuted me. Secondly, by filing a tax return, you don't protect yourself from a legal prosecution. Ask Leona Hemsley. She listened to her accountants and lawyers, paid $50 million, and went to jail. Right. Pete Rose. Pete Rose filed tax returns, listened to his accountants and lawyers. He, if he filed a zero income return the way I do today, he would be in a Hall of Fame today. Uh -huh. So if you follow my procedures, get the book for 25 bucks. Right. If it doesn't convince you, and then we have books and tapes, and millions of Americans are no longer paying income tax. As a matter of fact, the IRS admits today that between 10 and 15 million Americans don't even file. They admit that. The income tax is over. Barry, the income tax is collapsing around the government's head. More and more Americans are, 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 are becoming understanding of what I'm saying. They're not paying income taxes. They're filing. They're not giving the government any money. Because whatever you give the government anyway gets shoveled down the federal rat hole. Every American has a patriotic duty not to pay income taxes. I have on the Newsmaker Live in Las Vegas, Mr. Irwin Schiff. He's a tax authority. His, uh, one of his books is The Federal Mafia. It's a what I say on the attachment, and I, um, let me, I put on the attachment, I'll read you just portions of oh, that okay. attachment. I, number one, the, uh, I cite about five Supreme Court cases, about five appellate decisions, a number of, of here's what I say. I'll read you from the beginning of the statement. I say, uh, this statement is being submitted as part of my 1990, well, it's shows in the book, income tax return, and is an integral part of that return, even though that I know that no section of the Internal Revenue Code establishes an income tax liability, as, for example, Code Sections 4401, 5005, and 5703 do with respect to other taxes. Uh -huh. and provide, I said, I'm filing anyway <clears throat> because I uh, do not want to be illegally prosecuted for allegedly violating Code Section 7201 and Section 7203. And therefore, you, and you point out, it should be noted that the courts have ruled that, quote, a form with zeros inserted in the space provided qualifies as a return. I say CUS versus US versus Long, a US versus Kimball. Okay. And, and I then go on and I cite <clears throat> about yeah. four or five Supreme Court cases in which the courts are ruled, okay. the Supreme Court has ruled the word income means a corporate profit. And then you tell the government, since I know that the word income means a corporate profit, <clears throat> if I were to swear to having anything other than zero income, I'd be committing perjury. Okay. So it's not to commit perjury, I can only swear to having zero income. Okay, Mr. Schiff, uh, which book is this now? The uh, Federal yeah. Mafia. My latest okay, book is okay. the most comprehensive. Right, That's the book you want to get. Okay, next call is uh, Jack in Brooklyn. I, uh, I wonder, Mr. Schiff, if you have any suggestion for me in this matter. Yes. I filed estimated... Uh, returns for seven years. I for sent seven in, years? I sent in checks each time larger than what my tax would normally be. I yes. did not file a, an income tax uh, schedule. I okay. then filed it, and the government went through it and saw that I overpaid for each of the seven years. Yes. But then they said, you're past the statute of limitations. We cannot carry it forward, and for the th last three years, we'll pay you but before that, we keep it. Yeah, that's what they do. As a matter of fact... Uh, where does it ever say about the well, three well, years? That's, well, I, it, I it, never saw that. There is a statute. There is a statute that if you overpaid your taxes, you can't go back more than three years. That's the way, that's the what it is. Uh, now, even if you overpay, but I can get... You, if you didn't file a tax return, it, did you file a tax return yes. and swear you owe the tax? Yes, for the seven years. Well, then you years. assessed yourself. Yes. Now, if you haven't filed... Yes. You see, everybody can find out. There are many people, Barry, that I find that pay taxes, but they have a second job someplace, uh, you know, in a flea market, and they don't file. Now, all these people who don't file, but who allow taxes to come out of their pay, can mm -hmm. actually get their money back for those years in which they haven't filed. Now, here's how you can do this. You can write away to the government yeah. and ask them to send you a copy of the record of your tax assessment mm -hmm. pursuant to Section I'll give you the section. See, there's a law that allows everybody to get a copy of their assessment. And I'll read from the law for you. Uh, I'll read it. Section, uh, hold on, I'm just trying to find it here. Um, okay, section, section 6203 of the Internal Revenue Code. It's a short section. I'll read it. It says, the assessment shall be made by recording the liability of the taxpayer in the office of the secretary upon request of the taxpayer... The secretary, meaning the secretary of the treasurer, shall furnish the uh, taxpayer a copy of the record of Ir the assessment. Irwin, uh, Irwin, reading, to, it, it's really very difficult. Okay. Uh, all he has to do is buy the book or send to the yeah, taxpayer. if he buys the book, that section okay. is on page 61. 
Howard in Edison, New Jersey. Uh, hello, uh, Barry. Hello, Erwin. It's uh, Erwin. I've been a supporter of yours and the and the uh, Patriot movement for a long time. I'd like to just say one thing. You know, you, it's, you're giving a lot of advice here to people who uh, who aren't exposed to the constitutionalist or Patriot movement. And uh, you know, we've spent a lot of years developing strategies and and going through this stuff. And these people are going to get slammed by the IRS, and they're gonna, not going to know what hit them. I'd like your comment uh, on, uh, you know, they really have to get involved if they really want to uh, do something about this. I'd like well, to get your comment, Erwin, about the, uh, the Patriot con uh, slash Constitutionalist slash Militia movement that has been uh, demonized in the media recently. And uh, do you believe this uh, left-wing media attempt to support the socialization of our economy is, uh, is going to work? Okay, let me explain. Let me answer both questions. First of all, anybody would be foolish to attempt to do all this without getting my book. If you get my book, which is only $25, it tells you how to do all this. Uh, I try to give as much information as possible, uh, you know, and, and I invite calls, critical calls from tax lawyers who want to correct me or accountants or IRS or U.S. attorneys, but they never call because they know that they can't refute what I say. So, but when you're dealing with the federal government, you're dealing with the mafia. Organized tell me, crime. Tell me about the Patriot movement. I'll tell you about the first I've crime. heard. Go ahead. Okay. Now, the reason you have the so-called patriotic movement, there are a lot of, the, the understanding of why you don't pay income taxes, uh, many people who don't pay understand the Constitution, and they call themselves the patriots, the patriotic movement, because they're trying to uh, protect and preserve the Constitution, because the compulsory payment of income tax violates a number uh, of constitutional what provisions. Is, what is the patriot movement? Well, the patriotic movement is a lot of people who don't pay income taxes. No, you told me that. Is this an organized movement? Well, no, it's loosely. It's organized in some cities. There are all kinds of organizations and groups, and they have their own newspapers. And sometimes the militia is grouped into this movement. And let me tell you what brought about the militia. There are many people in the militia who are frustrated uh, today. Uh, they're working. Their wives are working. They don't seem to get ahead. Uh, their mothers and fathers Irwin, are... Where, Irwin, please. The gentleman called and he talked about the Patriot Movement. What well, is that? Well, the Patriotic Movement, as explained, there are no, a lot of people. Patriot or Patriotic? Well, it's, they call themselves the Patriots. I never use that term as applied to myself because sometimes I think it's self-serving. Okay. And it's a and, little... And who are the Patriots? Well, these are people who describe themselves, many people who are involved in not paying income taxes. A lot of people are involved in this movement. And that somehow they call themselves, in many cases, Patriots. Because and they and are they an organization? No, there's no one organization. But what there was are this? organizations in different parts of the country. Are you, are you there, sir? Uh, Barry, we're, uh, I, w I won't say that I'm part of it because I'm really not part of it. I know people who are, are, are related to it. And they're, uh, they're, uh, as Aaron Schiff says, they're loosely organized. They're all uh, race and religion, uh, people who are just uh, tired of uh, being uh, manhandled by the IRS. And, and how do you know about them? Well, they as I said, it's very loosely organized. People, well, how we loose is loose? How well, many? Of all, everybody talks about income tax uh, uh, at some point with somebody, and you meet people and you meet uh, friends that you have friends and uh, of yours that maybe they they call themselves tax protesters or or as uh, some acquaintances that I have call themselves patriots. Uh, I describe myself as a constitutionalist and I'm a sympathizer with their with their movement. Uh, and it, but they have regular meetings and uh, what what do they do at their meetings? Well, they 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 invite people like Erwin Schiff to speak on uh, on the IRS and uh, and uh, the, the tax law and uh, it's very state sovereigns and their sovereign citizens uh, their state citizens or they believe uh, that if you have a bank account or uh, you've automatically made yourself subject to the income tax a lot of the information that circulates in the so-called patriotic movement is, is not correct and I'm continually trying to stamp out a lot of these false okay. theories. Oh, yes, thank you, Barry. I've uh, been a fan for years. I'm a pleasure talking to you. Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, listen, uh, Mr. Schiff, I have a question for you. I'm, uh, I work for a major corporation, and I've been battling the IRS for a couple of years over an amount. I say 2000 they say 7000 And in, one of, uh, in some of my correspondence, I did not get back to them fast enough, and they attached my pay. First of all, I'd like to know, uh, under what authority do, can they attach my pay? They have no authority to attach your pay. As a matter of fact, what they sent to your employer was a notice of levy. If you take a look at it, the back of the notice of levy starts with paragraph B. They leave off paragraph A because the notice of levy can only apply to the accrued wages and salary of government employees. The person who mailed it to your employer has no authority to even mail it out. And what you should do is give your employer a sworn affidavit 
that, A, you have no such income tax liability, two, you never got a notice in demand for payment, and three, the person sending it out was not, uh, was not delegated to do so. When your employer gets it, that'll be a sworn statement. The notice of levy he got from the IRS is not sworn, and it's not a court order. Therefore, your sworn affidavit will take precedence. And if they turn over the money to the IRS, sue the employer. But the, but the, or go to the U.S. attorney and swear out a criminal complaint against the IRS agent who sent out the notice of levy because it's an example of mail fraud. Really? Okay, yeah. well, just, just very quickly. Uh, yes. Now, uh, right now they have me on a payment plan, and they, the, they, the big threat is if, I, if I'm late with a payment or I miss a payment, they'll do it again. All right, first of all, I don't believe in writing letters. I believe in going down to the IRS with a tape recorder, and we trap the IRS into making felonious statements. You see, there's a statute, 7214 of the Internal Revenue Code, which has now been incorporated in the Criminal Code. It makes it a crime for any IRS agent to engage in extortion under color of law. That's the words of the statute, punishable by up to five years in jail and the $10,000 fine. Now, every IRS agent is engaged in extortion under color of law. You get that on tape, and you know of the statute, and you beat them over the head with it. Uh, Mr. Schiff, I've got to leave you because uh, we've got uh, things to do. I thank you, sir, for being with me. And what's your broadcast schedule in Las Vegas? Well, I, I do. I'm probably <laughs> I do a radio show on KLAV from three to five every Thursday, and on Sunday night from ten to midnight on KVEG, uh, which goes to nine Western states. And they must love you in the uh, in the federal district attorney's office. Well, I call them every Thursday. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Barry. Thank you for being with me, Mr. Irwin Schiff. We are on WOR. Um, I, uh, I hope you found it interesting. I have been, uh, I started to get confused about uh, a minute after we started. But, uh, hey, that's what, that's what it's all about. I'll be right back. W-O-R.